What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to be doing a nice little MITX build and in this we will be using the Corsair 2000D. When I saw this case I thought to myself I definitely had to do a build in it because it is so compact and what they've done with this case is they've built it up instead of sideways and that way you're still able to save room on top of your desk. We are going to be doing an older style build, not so new but of course you could always use better parts but this is going to give you a baseline of what you could fit in a build like this. So the first thing we'll do is get the motherboard ready with the CPU, corrector frame, SSD, RAM and then we'll put that straight into the case and then we'll start building around it. We'll first put in our CPU, push on this clamp here, release to the right and then we'll grab the lever here and pull it on back. Now grab our CPU, we'll line up our markings with the CPU socket. Really the most important thing to remember here is your triangle in the bottom left hand corner and your notches on the top and the bottom. Now once that is in we need our tool and then you want to remove your four top screws that hold the retainer in place. Remove the bottom ones first and then take them out. Set that aside, we'll remove the other clamp, that comes right out, get the screws out. So now let's grab our corrector frame. We can now grab our top screws, put them back in. The reason why I installed the CPU first before in the contact frame, with the CPU in, there is a less chance of you dropping anything on top of your CPU pins and completely destroying your motherboard. When it comes to the tension of your corrector frame, a good rule of thumb to follow is get all your screws down snug and go in a cross pattern when you're tightening. As long as you can tighten it with two fingers and it stops, that should be enough. Let's put in our RAM. We'll open up our RAM slots. We'll line up our RAM slot and we'll line up the notches and then we'll push straight down. For the SSD, you'll need to remove two screws. Two slots. When you've got two slots, you always use the top slot first. With the SSD, you only have a notch here that you line up with your slot. When you push it in, you push on a slight angle rather than completely flat. Then grab your screw, push down and install your screw. So go ahead and remove the protective sticker for your M2 thermal guard, reinstall it. But what you need to do is go in on an angle and push it just underneath this thermal guard here. And then you line up your screw hole, install your screw. That is our motherboard completely done, ready to go. We'll now open up our case and get our motherboard straight in. For the Corsair 2000D, pop this top part open, and that just simply magnetizes. It's got four magnets. Then you've got these thumb screws on the side here. You just undo them. You've got a little tab here, you push on it, and then push on the one at the bottom. 2000D, which is an MITX and a very tall one. Now we'll also remove the front panel so we can see what we're doing. And that's it, look at this thing guys, that is so light. And then of course you've got this dust filter here that just comes on and off. You're able to install fans here. And that is our entire PC case. Your radiator is going to go here. Your SFX power supply is going to go inside here, right on this side. Okay, that's where your FSX power supply is going to go. You can have fans here on the front. And then you've also got room for fans here and also fans here. Very accessible. Let's just take this all apart so we can access everything. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to undo these two screws so we can remove this panel here. So you remove these two screws and you fold it down. Once it gets to about here, you can lift it up. It's got these two tabs here at the bottom, which slide inside, and that keeps it from moving around. All right, all right, you've got all your cables here. Our motherboard is simply going to go inside here. Here is how it's going to sit in. I'm very new to MITX build, so bear with me, guys. We will get through this, and I will be able to show you guys step by step how this is done. That is our motherboard in now. You've got this gap here at the back, and that's where all your ports are going to plug into. And you've also got this little L shape at the bottom here, which you can push on here, and you can lift it out. And that's going to gain access to all your ports as well as your graphics card. So that's how it all goes together. All right, so this is why it's also very important to suss out how everything is going to fit before you do it. We're going to have trouble installing our bracket for our AIO. So what we need to do first is install the mounting plate for the AIO. Once we do that, then we can put it into the case. This is our AIO. All right, frozen prism. It's actually a pretty decent AIO. And we pull out all our other parts that we're going to need. User guide, all our parts, and of course, our AIO. Now the one thing about Thermalrite is they've gone ahead and already installed the fans onto the radiator. What Thermalrite like to do is install the fans in an exhaust configuration, meaning it's going to blow all through the radiator, which is what you want because it cools it. So if you wanted to use it for intake, you would have to switch it around. And now we're going to our box of goodies. Okay, so here we go. Then we'll get our mounting plate. We we'll grab our screws. Use the furthest point of this mount. There are two points to it. Push that in. Have your plastic washers. Push them straight on. That's going to help hold screw in place. You do the rest, rinse and repeat. There we are, that is our bracket ready. Now we can install that into the motherboard. Grab your stand, which are these blue ones here. If you look on the top of these, you're going to see 1700. You just slide them straight on to be fine. We can now install our retainer for our pump. These two longer brackets. And you want to install these with the V-shape going in like that. 
push them over your screws and your stand, get it to line up centered as best you can. Then you grab your thumb screws and you screw it down. I know it seems like a lot of parts, but it's actually a lot simpler than it seems. And tighten it down. Just so it's nice and snug. Don't go too tight, you don't need to do that. You just want it nice and snug. With our AIO mounting bracket ready to go, we can now install this into the case. Our motherboard is going to sit in like this. Like that. We'll sit it down so we can put our screws in. Little package that comes with your motherboard, all your screws are gonna be in there, and that's this here. What we want are our motherboard screws. Let's install two screws across from each other. That is how the motherboard sits, and now we're going to install the last two screws because it only needs four. And we just screw that down, nice and snug. Before you start filling up this entire case, start plugging in some cables and figure out your cable route. That way, you don't have to worry about it when you've got so much in there already. Okay, and then plug in where they need to. I'm gonna start from the top, USB 3 in. And then we've got our audio. Make sure you line up your pins properly and then plug it in. We'll just push that in, right now for Type-C. There you go, Type-C's in. And lastly, what we have, is our front panel cables. How we'll do the power switch, we'll plug that in. Now that's all plugged in, ready to go. So you can pretty much see the way the cables are going to be routed, just like that. All right, so now let's get our AIO in. Our AIO will mount onto this plate right here, and let's install this bracket straight up. Move the screws for our AIO. Install four screws first. There you go. Okay, So ready, they're ready to go. So untangle all of our cables. Tidy up these cables a bit, just to keep them a bit neater. All I've done is just put a twist tie around these and keep all the cables together. Now let's install the AIO. I'm going to need some thermal paste, Arctic MX6, and we're going to go with a line straight down the center. And that should suffice. Being a longer CPU, you want to make sure you cover the entire surface area. You're going to need a nice thick line in the center. So now we just tighten each side until it is completely tight. Once it stops, you know that it's pretty much done. We just go a few turns on each side until it completely stops. That stops. AIO in, right, and that is our radiator in. Don't forget you had to line up these tabs at the bottom. And we're going to install everything else first. All right, so first let's do our power supply. This is the Silverstone SFXL series, 800 watt SX800, and it is an 80 plus titanium power supply. If you're unfamiliar with FSX power supply, it just means it's a much smaller form factor. Look how small this is. Though. That's why they call it small form factor. All right, and all our cables are packed in this little kit box here, ATX. So we're only going to need our CPU cable, which is this one here, CPU, graphics card cables, which splits to two 8-pins, at least one SATA. Power supply screws. First put in the ATX one. Here we have a 4-pin plus a 24-pin. We've got a 4-pin here and a 24-pin there. Just plug them in. SATA, and SATA is just here, so plug that in there. Our CPU, right here. Our GPU cables, which are the blue ones here, so we just plug them in. Power supply, ready to go. I'm gonna put some zip ties around it. It's gonna be a lot easier for me to route. Let's just our power supply. You have to remove the power supply a cage. You've got two screws here that you need to remove. I've already removed them. Okay, one, two. And then you've got two more on the inside. Okay. And once I remove this, the cage is going to come straight out. There we go. So your other two screws are here and here. And then to release it, you just lift it straight up and then take it out. So you've got vents at the top here, so that's where your top fan is going to go. This is how we install it. And then you've got screws here, which you screw in in order to hold the power supply in place. So There's your power supply installed, ready to go. Before you do that, I strongly recommend to plug in your cables first, as it's going to be a pain in the butt once you get this in. Untangle your cables, make sure they're not over crossing each other when they plug in. Let's plug in the ATX cable. And straight in. CPU's in. SATA cable can just stay there. Now let's reinstall our power supply. Let's get these two tabs in first. They go into these two slots on the top of the case. So you want to line them up first. Then you just slowly fold the power supply back down until it lines back up with their screw holes. We'll just make sure the cables are in the way. Try this down. And push that down. Line up our screw holes. Let's get that in. Power supply back in. 
with that in, we can now install our AIO without the fear of not being able to plug in any other cables. Double check your cables. Everything seems to be pretty well routed, so that's great. You have a choice of mounting your SSD cage here or here. You just pick, it's got two mounts. Let's install this AIO, see how we do. Oh wow, that's pretty good. Let's get our cables in. Like I said, I haven't built this before. This is my first time. And uh, hopefully you guys can learn from any mistakes that I make along the way. We need to make sure our GPU goes in quite easily. So let's get our GPU in first. Here is our Galax 4070Ti. Now I understand they have the 4070Ti Super now, but this card is still a very decent card, especially up to 1440p game. Got two 8 pins, and that they always give you for the Galax design. Right, so this happens to be a three slot card. It's pretty damn cool. Now I might not be able to use this, but we'll find out now. I'll plug this in first, get it out of the way. According to this, it should fit quite well because it actually has three slots. Let's see if we can get this in. I'm loving that so far. Oh shit, can we do this? Oh, look at that. That is crazy. It fits. And look how snug it fits. It fits so good. So I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to make sure everything works. And yes, we are using separate eight pins for each. I'm definitely not going to be able to install that extra fan on top. It's just not going to fit. There's no way that's going to work. We get this AIO in. It feels a lot better. But we need to look on the other side when it's touching. So we need to make sure that when this is down, there are, there's nothing in the way that's going to interfere with the fan spinning. We have the uh, GPU cable on this side as well that's kind of in the way. We need to get rid of that. So we can fix all that using zip ties. I'm gonna turn it on now just to make sure that everything works. That's all our fan cables in. You can see we've got power happening. Right, so we have all three fans spinning. It's good. Plug this into an ARGB header. The only ARGB port that we've got is right here, but uh, I guess we can make it work. What I did here was I just simply daisy chained all the fans together. Thank God you can uh, switch around the Thermorite logo, right? We'll bend our cable down, but we do not want to flex this much at all. We want to keep it straight here and it only have a slight curve. Now let's get this AIO in. There we go, we're in. All fans are spinning, nothing's grinding, nothing really gets in the way. I zip tied all of these cables together. These are the ones that come off the pump and the ones that come off the AIO fans. And I just put them all together and gave it a bit of slack where it plugs into five volt three pin. And we're gonna guide these cables to this section here. So hopefully when I push this down, all these cables can fold into this section here. And that's gonna make it a lot easier and a lot cleaner. And I can still see everything on top of the motherboard. Zip ties off, now let's get this in. Bam, look at that. Fits in really well. In order to help me get fans in here, I'm gonna end up using slim fans. Just going to really tidy up all our cables to ensure that they plug in nicely. Nothing's going to force it to uh, unplug. We need to get everything down nice and flat now. And let's tuck these in here. Our CPU cable is gonna have to pretty much sit like this. It's in. Now I'm gonna put a zip tie around this to keep it all together. Tuck it in under here, just like that. That works, and that's good. Put that nice and flat. Put a zip tie around all this. First, let's try one fan. The good thing about using it for intake, it's got the bracket here that's gonna stop cables from touching it. So that's gonna work to my advantage. See what it's like if I put one here? That is great. We have all our fan cables sorted. So I'm just gonna get a zip tie around everything and just pull it all together now. Start cutting off a couple of zip ties so I know that I can push the cables away as of now. Nothing is pushing on my RAM now, which was a problem before. Put in our AIO, let's give it a quick test run. Push it down. So here I've gone ahead and installed two fans. What you need to do is push in your fan from the top first because you have space up the top. Then make sure all your fan cables here come out through the top, route them up like this, so they're not interfering with anything else. Push it on up and then guide it down. Center it best you can and then install the screws. So all your cables are out of the way, pull that through just like that. Install the screws. Daisy chain I'm already plugged in. Because our 5 volt 3 pin is here and our PWM connector is also here, we're gonna daisy chain the right fan to the left. Right fan plugs into the middle fan. Plug this in here. Our middle fan will plug into our left fan. There we go. That leaves your left fan with the cables to be plugged in. Let's tidy up all these cables. Okay. My cable management isn't perfect and I'm really starting to get into these ITX builds. When it comes to MITX, you really have to be a bit vigilant with uh, cable management. It's really gonna help you out in the long run. Just keep the cables nice and tight. We've got a PWM connector right here, just down in there, okay? So we need to plug that in there. And as for our 5 volt 3 pin, we've got another one just here that comes off the splitter, so we can plug that in there. So that's in, here is our piggyback, so pull that off and plug that in. 
Now everything should be in sync now, seeing as uh, it's all coming off the 1503 pin header. Let's give it a quick test, make sure everything works. Cut off all these extra zip ties now, together. Hold everything down, so if I magnetize that just here, it should work out just fine. And there we go. It's keeping the cable flat there, and then it allowing the curve to come around like an S-shape. Perfect, there we go, we got it. That's if it all works out, we are pretty much almost done. We'll plug in our power supply. Let's turn it on. I'm really excited for this. Let's go. All right, so that sounds absolutely horrible. So we've got to turn it off straight away. Looking at it, I can already see what the problem is. I've got a fan cable here that is touching. I'll show you guys now anyway. This here was already touching the back fan blade. Let's grab the zip ties, very simple fix. Nice and tight. Cut off the extra. The problem was that when I pushed the AIO in, the radiator, all the cables just came out like this and it just started touching the back of these fans here. In order to prevent that, my hub here, I'm going to put a piece of adhesive magnetic on the back of this right now. We're going to magnetize it to the back of this corner here and it will work out just great. And here's just a little strip of magnetic adhesive. We're just going to stick it to the back of it. There we go. Put it straight on. It will magnetize. Look at this. Already, you can see that there are no cables that are going to be rubbing against the backside of the fan. Let's reinstall our radiator. The only other little hiccup I have is trying to get the AIO tubing to bend closer to the graphics card and then install it. That way, it will sit in without too much tension. As you can see, that's the way it's gonna have to go in. We just use like a blunt tool so we don't stab into anything and just force over the cable a bit. So now we'll put in the two screws again. Let's turn it on and see how we go. Turn it on, it looks so good. Even the graphics card here looks amazing because it's got the RGB going through it. So it looks really nice. You'll be able to see it through the mesh as well. All these glimpses of RGB, you see, it's just going to look really great. Really happy that I used these ultra slim RGB fans because it really helped to bring the entire PC together. Right, so now that we know everything is in place, let's install a 2 terabyte 2.5 inch SSD and we will be done. You can also see that there is another spot here for an SSD right there because we're not going to use this cage. So we have to install it this way with the cable this way because if you put this facing that way, it hits the wall here. Just put it in like this and line up your screw holes. Make sure all your screws fit first before you completely screw it down. We'll tidy up our cables a little bit more. Just tuck it into this corner here. We've got plenty of room to hide your cables. There we go. I'm just gonna leave it like this. Plug in our SATA cable. To install the SSD, you need two straight ends. And let me show you why in just a second. We're gonna route it behind the graphics card cable here, along with the backing plate of the graphics card. Now we'll push it on through, pull through our slack a bit. We're gonna have to plug it in from the top here. After you move everything out of the way, you can just see a SATA port right there, right? We need to just Work our way through here and plug it in right next to the um, RAM. Hopefully this isn't one of the ones that cancel out. Pretty much see here what I did with the SATA cable. I've routed it underneath the GPU cable here. Now we're just going to um, take back the slack. That pretty much concludes our build. Organize everything one more last time. Let's put in all the screws for the GPU. Grab our hub. Stick it right there where we want it. Ready to screw. Finally, we are complete with this MITX build and honestly guys, I think it looks amazing. So let's uh, put it all back together and let's see how it really looks when it's fully back together. And you can pretty much see how this came out. So here we have our motherboard, our power supply. Then we've got our graphics card here on this side here. We've got the mesh panel so that you can pull in cool air in order to cool down the GPU. We've also got three intake fans on this side here. I think that's a pretty good setup considering the amount of room that we had and it turned out pretty great. I'm really loving the way all of this comes together. Slide it on in all the way down. Make sure it's in these grooves here. That's what helps hold it in place. Let's put on our front panel. We just line it up, all these little tabs and nipples. Just line them all up and then push straight in. You want to install the top panel last or else it's not going to fit right. And as for these side panels, 
You see how there's one side that's thicker than the other? That is the bottom plate. In order to put in your panels, you see the side panel here? On the part that slides in first, you can see that there are four tabs. There is also a gap here with a tab. It must go through these tabs. So you push it on in and then you push it forward so that it locks into place. You line it up and you push it in. And lastly, our 2000D top panel. One side has a little cutout like this. That is the back because you see how it's got this little groove cut out right there. That's where your power cable is going to come through. You just sit this on top and it magnetizes down. And I have to admit guys, this was a very fun project. You notice how you've got these Velcro stickers? That's because on top you also have these two Velcro stickers as well. And what that's going to do is allow you to route your power cable that plugs into here down and straight down. Cut out that I was talking about earlier right here that's going to allow the power cable to come through underneath here you got this l bracket right that's where this comes in clamp it on in just like that if you did not have this removable panel how are you going to plug in any of your cables let's plug in a couple of cables get this up and running hdmi cable here plug that in i just want to show you what it's like when you plug it in at the bottom this is how you would plug in otherwise let's plug in usb dongle Let's plug in our ethernet. You come in from the side first like this, and then you route it through and plug it in where it needs to go. Pull back the slack so that you can put on your L bracket. Here we've got a monitor, mouse, keyboard. Let's put in our power cable. Try and have the Corsair symbol on the outside. Remember this little groove here? Now you can understand what that's for. Turn on your power supply, press the power button. Right, so now that we have the PC completely done, what we're going to do now is quickly install Windows and then with Windows installed, we can install a few benchmark softwares and give you guys a brief idea of how a 12700K with a 4070Ti will perform in things like TimeSpy and other benchmarks like Unigen. I'm not going to bother playing any games. There is plenty of YouTube clips showing you how a 12700K performs with 4070Ti. If you Google any of those or YouTube any of those, it's going to give you a rough indication of how this PC will perform. Right, so we're just going to quickly install some programs so we can do a quick benchmark. Right here we have 3D Mark, and we're also going to install Superstition. Open, we'll download this as well. Install it. Right, so here we have Munigen. I know it's only Direct X10, but that's fine. We just want to run some sort of benchmark. We'll run 1080p Extreme. Right, performance, let's run that. So that's just one benchmark, a little example of how it can perform. But as I said, if you just YouTube search any PC that has a 12700K with a 4070Ti, you're going to get a better indication of how a PC like this can perform. All right, so let's see if we have our 3D Mark installed now. Here we have hardware info opened up. You can see it is in fact a 12700K with 32 gigabytes of RAM running at 3200 megahertz, 47 Ti, and both our SSDs reading. 
Now let's run a quick time spy benchmark and let's see how that performs. And well, there you have it guys. There's a basic benchmark of how a PC like this can perform. Now remember, as I stated from the beginning, you could always put better parts into a PC like this. You could always use 13th gen, 14th gen CPUs. You can go all the way up to 13900KS, 14900KS, whatever the case may be. This is just a baseline of what you can fit into a PC like this. And honestly, my final thoughts, this was actually a pretty incredible little build. You were able to fit so much in such a small form factor that you really don't have to compromise on performance. As you saw, you're able to fit a 360 AIO in this and also still be able to use case fans in order to help push cool air through the case. And you can still use up to a three slot GPU. Although it cannot be any thicker than three slots, if you have something that is about four slots thick, it's probably not going to fit into this PC case. However, you can still fit a GPU up to approximately 365 millimeters. For such a small case, the ability to fit so much in such a compact case is just incredible. And in the end, the build was actually quite user friendly. It wasn't that much of a struggle. Corsair 2000D really did make building into this case quite easy. My final score in the end, I would give this probably about a seven out of 10 because it's not exactly perfect, but honestly, I would recommend it for anyone looking for a small form factor build where you still don't want to compromise on performance and hardware. Being able to fit up to a 360 AIO into this small little case is just amazing. And having all the mesh panels really helps this PC to breathe. And when you're building in such an enclosed case, it's very important that it has the room to breathe and the hot air can escape and cool air can also be introduced at the same time because that's really going to help with the performance of the PC overall. 
I'm really happy with the way this build came out. I couldn't recommend it more. If you are looking to build an ITX build, then definitely consider the Corsair 2000D. It's definitely a case worth a look. I honestly believe that you will not be disappointed building into a case like this. Be sure to stay tuned in the next upcoming videos. I'm going to be doing a few more MITX builds because they have really caught my attention and I'm really excited to see what else I can do with an MITX build, what I can fit in it and just how good it can get. So be sure to stay tuned for more videos and as always, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off. Bye for now guys.